What is up people, welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. Today we are going to take a look at Mr. Zayn Perek. I already made a video about him last year so I was already impressed by what I saw about him. I expected him to be a high end prospect but I'm not sure I expected him to explode as much as he did offensively this season. But anyways, without further ado, let's get this thing started right away. So, Zayn Perek is a right shot defenseman who stands at 6 foot flush and weighs in at 180 pounds. He's 18 years old and has a February birthday, so not on the younger side or the old side, he's just somewhere in the middle. In terms of ranking, it varies quite a lot. A lot of people have him outside their top 10 with Ferrari at the Hockey News who has him at 21. And then there's also plenty of other outlets and people who have him in their top 10 like Elite Prospect, Dauber Prospect and Scott Wheeler who have him at number 6. There's also that guy that I can never really remember his name, I think it's Marty from the podcast La Relève who had him pretty high if I remember well. By the way, what a podcast that is. For the francophones on here, go check that out. It's Podcast La Relève. It's really worth your time. It's just very good stuff. When it comes to stats, Perek is in a world of its own. At this moment, he has 87 points with 31 goals in 61 games. You heard that right, it's 31 goals. The next best goal scorer in the OHL as a defenseman is Oliver Bonk with 24 goals and that is with 15 power play goals. In contrast, Perek has 31 with 10 power play goals. So to put that into perspective, if we subtract Perek power play goals, he almost have Bonk total goal production. While if we do the same with Bonk, he doesn't even have 10 goals. That's how good Perek is at scoring, if what I said makes any sense. <laughs> now, in terms of point production, and not just goal scoring, he's the best defenseman in the OHL as a first-year draft eligible, and he's second behind only Ryan Ellis in the last 25 years in points per game, again, as a first-year draft eligible. That's better than D'Angelo, it's better than Evan Bouchard, it's better than Cam Fowler, Dougie Hamilton, Jimmy Drysdale, Drew Doughty, and many other elite offensive defensemen. He's also a very heavy volume shooter. He has 206 shots in 61 games. I expect him to have similar numbers to Zellweger next season and reach over 4 shots per game. And with that shot, he's going to score just so many goals. The impressive thing that I found while looking at all this thing is that Dickinson has more shots on net than Perek with 224. Kinda impressive, but only 18 goals and 11 of those came from the power play. For a little while, especially in the first month or two of the season, I wonder if he was going to be a D'Angelo without the head case thing type of defenseman. But I quickly realized that even if he looks very nonchalant sometimes, which is a theme that will keep coming back in this report, he was way smarter off puck than D'Angelo ever was, so I scratched that off my head. I mentioned this in my first round ranking podcast, but I read an article like two years ago, I think on NHL.com, that he had already finished high school and was taking classes at the University of Toronto, if I remember well, and that was like two years ago, so he must be a pretty smart kid. Other than that, I think everybody agrees that he projected as an average defender that lacks a physical element to his game, which is why I have both graded at 6, which is average, where where I believe there will be the most variation in, in assessment is in his skating. I think some people see it as high-end to elite as an element of his game, and while I agree it's great, I'm not quite there yet. On the other hand, I think it's pretty obvious to anybody who watched him that offense is elite and to a certain extent, his transitional game is there also or very close to. I was almost forgetting, I gotta self-promote. First thing, I've been slowly working on a website for the last few months and while it's not perfect and completely finished, I thought it was in a decent enough state to launch it. For now, the website is basically a written version of my videos. I take my bullet points and my not fully committed script from these videos and rewrite them in a more fully committed way for the website. <laughs> As times goes, there will be more stuff on it and it will get better. but. Honestly, I'm quite happy with the result and you should go take a look. The website is thebluechipprospect.com, so please go check it out. And while we're at it, I should probably do my usual thing right now and ask you to like and subscribe instead of stopping the video later to do it. So please, if you like the content, if you come back for it to watch highlights of your favorite prospect and hear what I have to say about them, please take the time to like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. So enough with the begging thing. Let's roll the clips. One of the reasons why I think there's a disparity between evaluation of his skating, it's mostly how much some ways maneuver maneuverability compared to speed. 
I think both are equally important for different reasons. Agility can give an advantage to a player while navigating tight spaces or evad evading players by making quick turns and quick cuts to open space and create gaps, or by selling fakes here and there to send the player covering you the wrong way. On the other hand, speed allows you to push the pace, it allows you to take advantage of gaps in coverage, it allows you to create separation, be first on puck, among other things. In Perex, in Perex's case, he has a very very fluid and elusive stride but isn't a speedster moving forward. I'm not saying that he's slow at all but I think his speed might be a little above average but not an element that would give him a big advantage in the NHL. On the other hand, his maneuverability and overall fluidity is definitely an advantage. The way he navigates the neutral zone, attacking with unpremeditated routes and on every breakout is very unpredictable. He's not a player that just takes what's given to him, he's a player that takes. He's a player that will take whatever you thought you had. His fluidity extends to his pivot and backward skating. He doesn't get pass on the wing very easy and can pretty easily keep tight gaps on the attacker. For some reason, it jumped to me while watching him of how fluid he is at pivoting and recovering from stretch pass down the middle. He can pivot without losing, losing speed and sometimes even catch the attacker because of how well he recovered. But one thing, he does look extremely nonchalant all the time. The good thing is that it's everywhere in his game. He looks nonchalant when attacking as much as he does when he's defending. It's not like it's only when defending that he goes from 100 to 0 like Mishkov last season, for example. He always looked like he's playing with 10% drive. But I don't think it's necessarily the case. I think it's more that the game comes really easy to him. But that could be a double-sided blade. We'll see how it goes. I don't think his defense is as bad as some make it out to be, but this is very dependent on when you watched him. From one game to another, it varies, but it also varies a lot from the beginning of the season to what it is now. There was a significant progress in his read and his positioning over the course of the season. I watched about a dozen or so games and a few others where I was more focused on Beck, Misa and Dionikyo. And the difference is pretty significant in my opinion. He's never going to be a defender that plays heavy and prevent entries with his body and box out players. That's just not gonna happen to the point where I don't even have a section in this video for his physicality because I just have nothing to put in there. I literally have two clips of not even 10 seconds for the three games that I took the time to clip and all the highlights that I clipped. He's never boxing out players in front of the net, he never hits, he never battled to gain body positioning, he never pins players on the board, he's 100% a stick and brain player. His whole defense is based around using his stick and skating to lock you out wide or to prevent passes to the slot by putting himself in passing lanes and using his stick to deflect passes and shots. Not every defenseman needs to be Shea Weber anyway, I would love to see him engage a little more physically, but it's simply not there. Doesn't mean he doesn't defend well enough though, he is constantly scanning the eyes to read the plays and position himself accordingly, and when I say he's constantly scanning, I mean it like literally, and in every facet of the game. He's always reading the flow of the game and adjusting accordingly. He can play tight to the player and be disruptive as much as he can give him space and work the lane. So overall, not a bad defender, but his game will come with risk and that will impact his defense. But against, against a rush, an in-zone defense won't be a negative because of how smart he is and because of his canning habits. If he does end up being a negative value in a defensive zone, his transitional play and offense will more than make up for it. When it comes to transitional play, I think that if he can clean up his risk management a little bit, he has the making of an elite breakout machine in the NHL. Like I said in the skating section of the video, he's extremely elusive as a skater and can escape pressure with ease. Against most of the four checkers, he can maintain the gap created and skate the puck to the neutral zone or the offensive zone himself. Against some, he will lack that extra gear to maintain the gap and exit cleanly so he defaults to a pass. And in, the, in this case, it's always on tape and flat even when it's essentially a three-line pass splitting the defense down the middle. The only thing that I can see that could be a problem is the decision making sometimes. He sometimes forces plays and breakouts that just aren't there or very close to 0% chance of success. It's clear he wants to transition the play from his own zone to the offensive zone as quick as possible, but I think that he would gain from slowing it down from time to time. Especially since sometimes it looks like he's sending a stretch pass to a player who was just absolutely not expecting it at all, just like he sometimes skates through the neutral zone with back pressure while teammates are open and on the move. 
I don't think it's that big of an issue since a lot of this can be fixed with experience and playing with better players that might be a little bit more aware. But once again, he often looks very nonchalant on a breakout, but he gets it done shift after shift. It's weird. Is it confidence and swag or is it a lackadaisical attitude? I don't know, but he spins off checks like it's nothing, skates to the other side like a ballerina while thinking what he's going to do this weekend, and sends a perfect pass through the neutral zone, slicing the defense just like that. He sure has that star swag and the skills to match it, and if there's a play, he will see it and he will make it. Wherever he is on the ice, he has that ability to move the play in the other direction with just one quick pass, even when the defense from the other side got the puck out of their zone, he rarely fully resets, just preferring sending a quick one-touch pass to a player on the move and gain back the zone in an instant. Overall, just a very skilled and efficient transitional player with tremendous vision and scanning habits. When it comes to offense, I think he's the most dynamic offensive defenseman in this draft. Ziv Bouyem and Lev Shunov are impressive in their own way, but Perek is the whole package. His offense is multi-layered and I think it all starts with his shot, like who in this draft has that good of a shot as a defenseman? Like probably nobody. Maybe Yakemchuk ain't that far, but not exactly like Perek. Perek is an elite shot in my opinion and he's even more elite at getting the shot through and getting the shot on net. There's a couple ways he likes to do it and he just never misses, he either uses maneuverability to walk the blue line and create shooting lanes, shaking coverage with his skating and changing direction, he also often joins the rush as a second layer in the slot to take a high danger shot, he loves to activate from the blue line and move down the zone, he presents himself as an option and shoot from close, and also from the blue line in, he will take all the space that's available to him to get closer as he distributes the puck so he can shoot it from the high slot. He constantly drives the middle of the high slot to take his shot, but anyway he does it, even when it looks like he's just taking a little whippet shot, he's still placing it on net every time. He doesn't have 31 goals by accident, he didn't break the goal record for a draft minus one last season because of luck, he's doing all this because the shot selection, the shot placement and the shot itself are all elite. Then he excels as a distributor too, on the power play at the top of the zone nobody can touch him as he closes down and gets closer and closer. He has really quick hands to keep the puck off reach and never look where he's passing. Even when he's leading the rush or coming down from the blue line, he can find players across the ice without ever looking their way and selling shot the whole time. I think the puck skills are great and that he's an excellent passer but I'm not sure I would say he's an elite passer though. I'm more tempted to say that he's a high-end creator with high-end creativity and high-end like ability to send mixed signals until the final play. It's more a combination of his hockey sense which is through the roof, his stick and link, his skating, his vision, his puck skills that makes him such a high end passer in the offensive zone and not just one skills in one skills, one skill in particular. It's hard to see a world where he's not a top four first power play type of defenseman in the NHL. First because offense like that will translate no matter what because it all starts from the hockey sense and the constant read of the ice. Then it's followed by the, the high end skills, it's not the other way around. The fact that he's equally good at making things happen on the rush by leading it or joining it or at creating offense once they've settled in the zone by putting pucks on net or passing and activating down the zone creating odd numbers and breaking defensive structures, all this is a great indicator for me that the offense will translate quite well to the NHL, maybe even better than I expect. I think that's about what's right to expect, a top 4 first power play guy. If the offense turns out to be quite significant and he can defend well enough at the NHL level then maybe he can turn out to be a first pair first power play player but I'm not there yet. But if there's one defenseman in this draft that has superstar potential, it's him. Now I would never compare a player to Rick Carson and say this is what I expect him to be. That would be not fair to any prospect. Carson once was the most dynamic offensive defenseman in the NHL and a player who averaged like 29 minutes of ice time with Ottawa in a season while being a point per game player. He's also like a three time Norris Trophy winner and a five time NHL first all star team. That's not something you can project out of a prospect. It's something that happens and you just take the win. 
it's not something you you scout and you like yeah that's what it's gonna be but outside of all that i think the type of player is quite similar in many ways in the way that they are offense first defenseman defenseman that was and will be critiqued for their defensive mistake and risky plays defensemen that are mostly area defender and don't play too much of a physical game even if once in a blue moon they can jump in and crush someone out of nowhere defensemen who can create offense any way you want it at an elite level and just like carson often has he looks nonchalant in everything that he does like it's just too easy for him so there you go once again i hope you guys enjoyed thanks for watching see you in the next one peace